Mr. Ambassador, uh, the movement of data around the world is essential for businesses of all types here in the 21st century, from automobiles to airplanes to agriculture and different apps. Access to data around the globe is paramount importance for businesses of all sizes in order to compete in a global economy. So data flows today have increased, they've grown by 45 times since 2005, and they're expected to grow by another nine times by 2020. However, as you know, currently there are no enforceable trade rules specifically protecting data flows, which leaves American companies vulnerable to digital manipulation by foreign governments. And such efforts include data localization, forced technology, or source code transfers, and other pernicious efforts that undermine competition from U.S. companies. And both you and Secretary Ross have voiced public support uh, for enforceable digital trade rules in your confirmation hearings, as well as more recently. So does the administration view inclusion of digital trade rules as a top priority for a NAFTA modernization uh, and other future trade agreements? Absolutely. That's good to hear. And Ambassador, uh, you've also mentioned that you have notified Congress uh, of the intent to initiate negotiations with Mexico and Canada regarding NAFTA. Given that NAFTA uh, modernization will set that precedent also for future negotiations with other countries and other agreements, it's a tremendous opportunity to help break down barriers to digital trade and allow U.S. companies to compete in North America. Can you share with us or the committee any information about Mexico and Canada's views on digital trade heading into those negotiations? I have not had dis uh, discussions with, with Mexico or Canada with respect to, um, yeah, to this issue. Uh, we expect to have a digital uh, chapter, as you suggest. We expect it to be a very high-level agreement. Um, I will have discussions with them, but I have to be careful because we're not allowed to begin negotiations until we go through the TPA process, which we, which we take as, as, a, as a, a very important commitment. Having said that, I guess I would be very surprised if both of them didn't agree fundamentally that we need this. They're, 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 um, and neither one of them are, are in the group of, of countries that are, that are, as you suggest, um, uh, trying to create new industries by using uh, 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 tactics like uh, force transfer of technology, like uh, data localization rules. So. I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll be able to put together a, a good chapter, but I, I certainly take it from our point of view that it would be very difficult to pass an NAFTA implementing bill that doesn't have a very high standard uh, digital chapter. Good, that's important. good to hear. Um, let me just shift gears real quick. You know, the United States and then my home state of Minnesota is a leader in medical device innovation and growing exports in that area that create a lot of really good jobs here at home and then help improve healthcare outcomes around the world. And other countries now are increasingly taking very extreme and misguided measures to control healthcare costs. As an example, in India, we're seeing severe price controls that disproportionately affect American medical device manufacturers, putting them at a competitive disadvantage. India has also rejected requests by U.S. medical device manufacturers to withdraw affected products from the market and then has announced its intention to impose price controls on additional categories of medical devices. And then another example would be in Italy, where only U.S. publicly traded companies are required to account for expected revenue losses related to a yet-to-be-implemented and highly controversial payback law that would require companies to pay back to the government any medical device spending in excess of an arbitrary predetermined level of spending. And these are policies that hurt American companies and deters these companies from inter introducing new innovative technologies in these markets, which ultimately means patients are going to have less access to these products. So can you just share a little bit, how will the administration work with India or other foreign governments to ensure that our companies are not being driven out of the market by arbitrary price caps or spending measures that make it impossible for innovative companies to compete? Well, thank you, Congressman. I have met with the, a group of medical device executives, and I've heard the horror stories, and that really is what it is. They are, they, this is an issue that we are raising with India, uh, and we're going to use the, the Prime Minister's visit as a, as a launching pad to make sure that the, that the disc gets proper attention. So, um, everything you say, we completely agree with. Um, 
all we can do at this point is raise with them, show the unfairness of them. And this, to me, fits into the category also of things that if you have a big trade surplus with the United States, you should not be doing things like this to the United States. They should be trying to encourage, the, uh, they should be in trying to encourage imports from the U.S. <laughs> and their problem is even bigger because this is another example, the, the medical device area is another example where China is now going to move in, has it on their Made in China 2025 list of, of industries that they want to become world class in. So this is an industry that I think we really do have to focus on, and we, we met with them and we expect to do to put together an action plan. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Mr. Martin, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ambassador, for being here today. I've got a couple of questions and issues I want to bring.